we must be very careful going in to this season and also knowing that in these last days, there are going to be flare-ups, just like Davina here and all that gunfire. There are going to be flare-ups of the bizarre and the dangerous. So we must take authority. We can't just sit around like Mamby Pamby uh, uh, wimps of Christians just believing in, oh, God. No, 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 no. We must take authority. You want something to stop? Command it to stop in the name of Jesus. All right. Now, moving right along. Verse 19. If a man for conscience sake toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. That's what I was dealing with when I was talking about that. There may come times when that tries to flare up. And God can give you wisdom how to handle it. But don't be surprised when it happens because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Remember that. So verse 20, for what glory is it? If when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. You know what that means? That's saying, okay, so you did something wrong. Somebody gets on your case and you handle it real nice, even though they weren't that nice about it. Well, God's not patting you on the back for that. But if when you do well and you're doing your best and suffer for that, you take that patiently, this is acceptable with God. It's not acceptable with us. Because I tell you, I don't like anybody telling me I did something, blaming me for doing something I didn't do. Oh, I don't like that. That's a hot one for me. So I got to pray real, as the old folks say, pray mighty. I got to pray real hard for that one to keep my attitude in check and not try to get up and defend myself and rear my little, you know, rubber neck head up. And yeah, so we have to be careful in those times when we know we didn't do wrong, when we know we're in the right and we take the wrong patiently anyway. Mm. Boy, oh boy, that takes some prayer right there, y'all. That takes some Holy Ghost grace. For even hereunto will ye call, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. And you know what his example is. When he was buffeted, he didn't retaliate. Did he? Hmm. Think about it. When he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. By his stripes ye were healed. For ye were sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. So we owe it to him to handle the life's buffeting in love, to handle the little snide acts and remarks with mercy. You ask somebody to get you lunch because they're getting the whole office lunch or the whole salon lunch, and they go and get it. At, but when you put in your order, they always somehow forget yours, right? And then now you're getting ready to go get something to eat and they come and ask you to get you something, to get them something to eat. What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to want to do? You've gone a couple of hungry days because they purposefully, accidentally on purpose, forgot your lunch because you bees the Christian up in there and they don't like it. So now they need something and they're asking you to get it for them. What are you going to do? Ha! What are you going to want to do? And then what are you going to decide to do? Yeah. Now, now we're dealing with it, huh? Yeah. You going to get it? Or you going to give them their comeuppance and say, Oops, so sorry, Charlie. 
How are you going to handle it? With mercy or spite? Think about that one. Check yourself. <laughs> oh, it's so tempting. It's so tempting. Oh, to br bring railing for railing and accusation for accusation. You, you know, you talking about I did so and so. Well, you did that last month, and I didn't go around trying to make you look ugly. And here you come lying on me, and I am come on now. You know how that thing can escalate. You know how ugly it can get. Then folks aren't talking to each other, and you're avoiding them, and they're avoiding you. But you're not your own. You were bought with a price. You are to represent. You are to imitate your Savior. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? How would Jesus handle this? What would Jesus not say? And that better be what does not come out of your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that's how you know what's in your heart. See, this is what God does. He uses life. He squeezes us like a tube of toothpaste. And while he's squeezing, what comes out oh, will either be anointed and holy and loving, or what comes out will be nasty and fleshly and sinful, and it will stink in the nostrils of God. So what's going to come out of you when other folks are spreading their stink around? What are you going to do? How are you going to handle their stink? How are you going to handle their nasty, snide remarks, their, their funky attitude? How are you going to deal with their accusing you of doing something you did not do? How are you going to deal with being punished for something you don't even know what they're talking about? How are you going to deal with that? Everybody looking at you at the corner of their eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thinking that you did it. You're going to stand there and let the office know. Let me put you all on front street. I did not. Or you're going to let God be your defense and just go about your business doing your job. How you going to handle that? Mm. Somebody bawled you out in front of the whole staff. Oh, I hate that. Don't front me off in public, y'all. Mm -mm. No, don't do that to me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Yeah, I like respect, y'all. But I have been disrespected. I'm going to share how I dealt with it. I walked in the salon one day. Sometimes the stories help. This is one of my good stories, not one of my failures. I walked in the salon one day, working, doing my thing. And God knows, as they say, as God is my witness, I was always very careful with the owner's air conditioner. I'm not one that loves it anyway. So every chance I get, I turn it off and just let the fan blow to, to save her electric bill. I come in the shop. I'm doing my work. Been there a few hours. Esther leaves. And one woman walks up to me. Esther's the owner. She, she's done with her day. The air's still blasted. One woman walks up to me and balls me out in front of the whole salon. That I should be more mindful of that woman's electric bill. I should be more careful. How could I sit there and turn that air conditioner on that high? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm sitting up there feeling scolded like a little kid. And when she got through, believe me, while she was talking, I had a dialogue going on with God right in here. And when she got through, I said, uh, so-and-so, may I see you in the kitchen? Because the salon was a, a converted house. They converted a house into a salon. So I said, can I see you? Can I see you in the kitchen? So she meets me in the kitchen. And I said, number one, before you decide how much or how much harm someone has done, find out if they're the ones that did it. I never touched the air conditioner. Esther was the one 
that came in my room and and set the, the thermostat. That's number one. She did not turn it off when she left. So what I want you to know is next time you have a quarrel, an issue, a situation with me, pull me aside and show me enough respect like I'm doing you right now. And speak to me in private. Ask me privately what I did or what I didn't do before you decide to chastise me for something I don't even know what you're talking about. And she said, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. And then she went on. That was the end of that. And I told her, I'm, I'm good. You know, we're good. I'm, I'm done with it. But I just had to let you know. I would appreciate it if you want to chastise me to do it in private. Like I'm doing you. And that never happened again. And we were good. That point on, we were still good. Didn't have any problem. But I'm telling you, there are people that will rub your nerves so bad. You'd be like, let me tell you something, sweet pea. Or let me tell you something, mother dear. And you start putting out all these little snide comments. Number one, don't you ever talk. And you know, there it goes. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll storm off and just leave. Well, screw you. Well, screw you. We'll forget you. We'll forget you. Drop dead. Go to hell. And, and off you go. Temper tantrum, leaving the job, taking your, your thing off, throwing it, tossing whatever's in your hand, and say, take this job and shove it. And you're out. You're gone. Emotional outbursts mm, can change your situation from day to night in a split second of uncontrolled emotion. That's why God gives us the Holy Spirit because with the Holy Spirit comes a very special fruit and that fruit is called temperance. Temperance is self-control. Temperance is one of the greatest gifts he could have given us because many people are killed they're hit, they're hurt, they're injured. Many people have lost jobs after that, lost houses, lost cars, lost a lot of things, reputation, a lot of things. Some people have been incarcerated. Why? The lack of self-control. Don't allow Satan and his little imps and demons to push your buttons through people. Don't allow anybody to do that to you. There are too many lives that have ended over something ridiculous, over something that was that was so asinine. I mean, it's like you went off all, all that, all that drama for that little thing right there. Really? See, that's why we need to get inner healing from God. Because Satan knows how to push those buttons. But the more you go to God for healing, the less buttons he gets to push. Yeah. The less he gets to play you like an instrument. Right. So don't dance to Satan's tune. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> so that's my main thing I'm dealing with today. Is that we have to be careful how we respond when we're doing well and things go against us at those moments. That seems to be the crux when the other scripture the Lord led me to is saying the same thing. Deal with it even when they're frowy. You still be your father's child. Be a chip off the old block. And show them what real character is. Show them what real dignity, what real poise, what real diplomacy, what real class. It be a class act for God. If not for yourself, be a class act for God. Amen. <laughs>